Hello everyone and welcome back to the Getting Started with Power Apps Component Framework tutorial series. In this tutorial, we are going to build our first code component for Canvas app. In this tutorial, we'll understand how you can create your code component project. We'll understand what files exist in a code component project and we will go ahead and start building it that being said before i start building or even before i start with the project we first need to know what we are going to build so we are going to build a code component which glows i call this glowing text component in this component we can go ahead and edit the properties of this particular control now let's say that i want to change something out here i'll say happy birthday clavin i can add this like this in this particular way i can also change the font size let's say i'll make it 72 and then i can also change the color similarly i can change the alignment and also the text weight so this is what we are going to build. To build this, we need to make sure that the prerequisites are in place. And I hope that you already have the prerequisites in place because I have already told you how you can, what prerequisites are needed and from where you can get them. If you have not done it yet, please revisit my previous tutorial. The prerequisites would be Visual Studio Code, Node.js, LTS version, Microsoft Power Platform CLI and .NET build tools. So that being said, let's start building our code component. So let me start off by first building, by first creating a folder, right? So I'll create a folder on my desktop and I'll name it, rename it to glowing text. Text PCF component, okay? It's a long name, plus, but please bear with me. So once the folder is created, I'll open my Visual Studio Code. I can simply open my Visual Studio Code by right click and say open in code, right? This will open my code editor. I'll say yes, I trust this author because this is being created by me. That being said, the first thing that I need to do is open my terminal and create my component. To create the component, we are using the Power Apps tool right so pack is the tool that we need to use so if i hit pack you see these are the tools that are provided by pack we are interested in pcf so i can say pack in it sorry i'm interested in pcf so it's pack pcf then i need to say in it because i need to initialize the component and then i need to give it a namespace so name uh, I'll specify in my namespace here, I'll say glow text PCF component and then I'll also give it a name. I'll say glow PCF control, right? I'll hit enter. It tells me that a argument is missing and yes, it's missing an argument. The argument is the template. So it actually tells you that what arguments you're missing. So if you go wrong somewhere, like I just went wrong with the thing, don't worry, the Power Apps CLI will help you out. So I need to specify a template. There are two types of templates. We'll talk about it later. But as of now, we'll specify a field related template. I'll say enter and it created my code component. And if you see, the files are being created. Next, I need to type in npm install so that all the required binaries will get populated in my project. So I'll say npm install and this will install all the code modules. So here, my friends, the PCF control or the project has been configured. So let's look at the project structure. The first and foremost, you have a folder and the folder is known 
is the main control or is the main component, right? The folder is the main component and it holds the files such as control manifest and index.tx. And we also have a generated folder, a subfolder, and we have manifest types d.ts. Okay, that's very important. Now, before we get into the manifest types, .d.ts file, we should actually first look at the manifest file itself. So the manifest file, as you see, is an XML file that contains the metadata of the code component. Yes, it contains the metadata of the code component, such as its name, such as its version, such as its display name, and much more. So let's start with line number three. Line number three is very important as it has a namespace. The namespace is the same namespace that we specified in the PCF init command. It then specifies a constructor. So we'll talk about the constructor later. Then the version. The version of the code component is very important, right? Every time you go ahead and deploy this code in Power Apps or in CDS or in Dataverse, the version should be updated or else your Dataverse will always reference the previous version of your code component. So please understand this if you are going ahead and making changes and if the changes are not being reflected in your Power Apps, then it seems that your app is using a previous version because it forgot to update the version number here. The next is the display name, the display name of the code component or the display name key. Then comes the description. What is your code component about? I can actually change this description. I'll say that text, come on, text that glows. And then it's a standard type of component. Perfect, right? So line number three is very, very important. Secondly, let's go a little bit down and let's see the other components or the other XML keys that we might use while building our code component. So from line number four to line number 18, for, we are not going to use these so from line number four to line number 18, they are not being used in our code component because we do not have an external dependency. We are going to create a code sample that is very, very simple. For example, if there's an external service usage, you can say, yeah, it's Microsoft.com. And you are also not going to do anything with external domains, right? So let's skip that for now in the advanced tutorial series in quite detail. Then the second comes the property name. Now what is a property? We already saw the properties in our app that we were trying to configure. So these are the property names. So these can, are configured in the manifest file. If you see this has a sample property and this property has a display name and a description field. It also has a type associated with it, right? This type is single line of text. But if you're going to use something like a group, which is there in the comment section below, you need to configure it in this manner. As of now, I think single line of text is what we need. Or we might need a number for a font size. So type is single line of text. It can be number. It can be a group and so on and so on. Then usage. Usage are basically of two types. One is bound and input. Bound properties are bound only to a value of a column. However, inputs are either bound to a column or a static value. In our case, we leave it at bound, right? Bound basically is very, very important when it comes to model-driven app because you will have a form on the form, there will be an entity and an entity will be a column. And you bind or you have bound 
this particular control to a specific column, right? That is what it is. And finally, you can specify if it's required, yes or no. Then comes the resources, right? The resources can be CSS file or can be resource files. The resource files are basically used for example, if you want multilingual in your app, you'll use a resource file. CSS is used to go ahead and make your app look beautiful. So if you're going to use CSS, yes, we are going to use it. We can just uncomment this line of code. Then comes the feature usage. Feature usage is very important, again, in the context of model-driven app. Because you will be leveraging web API and utilities a lot. Web API can be used to query a column or you can say an entity from your form. And the utility will support it. In addition to that, you can also go ahead and use a file picker if you want to. You can go ahead and have audio, capture images, capture videos, barcodes. You can also get the current position, that is your geographic location in the model-driven app. Again, for this app, it's very simple, so we are not going to use these particular controls. Now that we know how the control.manifest is, I just want you to remember that we have one sample property out here, and it's bound, and it's required. So we should see this property in the test harness, okay? And this particular property will be present in the manifest file as well. So you see? The sample property is used as an input and an output interface, which will be used in our actual code component. So the actual code is written in index.ts. And this is the file that we are going to work upon in the next tutorial. That being said, let's go ahead and try to run this particular code component. So I'll type in npm run build. So this will build my code component and I'll say npm start watch. Perfect. So this opens my test harness and here my friends you see that there is a sample property. The other properties would be the width and the height. We'll look at it in the next tutorial but most importantly, the data inputs are the sample property and it's of a type single line of text. So we'll pause the tutorial here and we'll come back in the next tutorial and start building our code component in the index.ts file. Thank you and bye-bye.